Hi, good afternoon. Uh, this is John Loper. I am the Director of Corporate Relations for CFP Board. Uh, we're here in Washington, D.C. and we're, I'm excited to introduce our guest speaker today, uh, Dr. Lisa Andrews, uh, who's our manager of our Career Center. Um, before, we, before I get to Lisa's introduction and her bio, I wanted to uh, cover a few housekeeping items. Um, you will be able to submit questions through the webinar interface. Um, everyone's microphone is muted, so um, I'm, I'm getting feedback that you all can hear us loud and clear. So um, if you have issues on your end, it might be uh, with your computer, uh, but we do have your microphone muted. Uh, we're going to have a Q&A period at the end of the webinar. Um, feel free to submit those questions as you think of them uh, as we're going through this presentation because uh, we will see all the Q&A that has been submitted. Um, there will be a recording of the webinar, uh, so if you or a colleague, um, oh, I'm sorry, if, if a colleague of yours you knew was going to be on the line but, but last mm -hmm. minute couldn't uh, attend this, uh, we are recording it and, and it will be distributed uh, via email uh, to, to listen again. Um, as we stated as part of this webinar, uh, and to thank you for participating today, we're going to be giving away three uh, free 30-day job postings, um, and we're going to draw the first one uh, in a second uh, after I introduce um, Lisa. So let's get to that. Uh, actually, before we get to uh, Lisa's introduction, I wanted to add that in, in my travels as the Director of Corporate Relations, um, you know, there are many different business models out there, many different financial services firms, uh, but the one thing they all have in common is everybody is looking for uh, talent. Um, and, and a big distinction that we bring, and I know Lisa's going to be getting into more specifics around how to make your, your posting even more effective, uh, but that designation, the Certified Financial Planner designation, um, you know, really puts those candidates above uh, the average candidate out there in terms of experience, examination, ethics, uh, uh, et cetera. So, uh, and then Lisa's going to be giving you uh, better tips uh, on, the, on how to get the best ones in your market. Lisa Andrews, uh, Ph.D., is the manager of CFP Board's Career Center. Uh, prior to arriving at CFP Board, Lisa served as Director of Career Services at the University of Maryland University College. Previously, she was Director of Career Services at Stetson University and has worked in career development for more than 20 years. She's helped match thousands of employers with new talent. She received her BS in psychology from Elizabethtown College, her MS in counseling and human relations from Villanova, and her PhD in higher education from the University of Arizona. Please join me in welcoming Lisa Andrews. Uh, and I was just reminded, let's draw the first winner. Uh, our first winner for a 30-day job posting. And by the way, for the winners that we announced today, we will be in touch with you. David Firth, F-I-R-T-H, of OPES Advisors, O-P-E-S. Congratulations. And uh, Lisa, take it from here. And we'll announce the uh, other two winners at the end of the presentation, so stay tuned. Lisa? Thank you very much, John. So today we're going to cover uh, hiring tips and best practices for sourcing high-quality talent. We'll tell you a little bit more about the CFP Board's Career Center and how it can help you source talent and give you some resources as well. So let's talk about job postings because job postings really are kind of your way of communicating your position and what you have open to candidates. So this is kind of, this is sort of your resume in a way as a company to present yourself to candidates and say, you know, this is who we are and this is the opportunity that we have to offer you and so the way a job description is worded is pretty important because you want to make sure that you're presenting all the information that's going to make the candidate attracted to the position and want to apply. So there are a few things that every job description should have. In some of the job descriptions I've seen that have been successful, there's a mention of the company's culture or environment. This could be your mission statement, your vision statement, 
or it could just be a few words about how your, um, your organization operates. Just something to give the potential candidate a little bit of flavor, a little bit of color about your organization so that they have more reason to kind of read on to the rest of the job description to see what the duties and responsibilities are going to be. Another great aspect of a successful job posting is clearly defined roles and responsibilities. So, you know, if you don't clearly identify what the person is going to be doing, it, cre it creates some interesting scenarios. For one, let's say you put in a, a couple of things that you want them to have or want them to be doing, but you mm -hmm. leave out some things. That can really be, a, 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 be detrimental during the interview process because let's say you've selected your candidates, you brought them in for interviews, you're talking about the position, and you mentioned three or four things that weren't in the job description. That may turn the candidate off and say, well, gee, you know, they, or they may say to themselves, you know, that's not really what I signed up for. This is not what I thought the job was going to be. And they may withdraw from your application procedure. So it's really important to be as upfront as possible. On our Career Center site, there's no character limit. So you can be as long-winded as you would like when you are putting your job description out there. Um, and I would say, you know, the more detailed, the better. Um, you can certainly expand on that detail during the job interview, but the more detail you can provide up front to the candidates, the better off you're going to be in the end when candidates are actually applying because you're going to make sure that you're getting the appropriate candidates who are interested in everything about the position. It's also helpful to demonstrate a path of succession, and this is something that I hear from candidates. When they're looking for a position, they're looking for a long-term opportunity, an opportunity where they can stay with your organization and they can move up within the organization. So any mention of you know, potential for um, advancement after a training period, let's say, or something like that, can make your position pretty attractive. I know a lot of you aren't comfortable doing this or don't like to mention salary right up front, but if you can make mention of the salary and the benefits package that's going to be offered, it's certainly going to make um, it easier on the candidate to make a decision about whether they want to apply for that position or not. But if you don't feel comfortable talking about the exact salary that you're going to be offering, I think at least you should talk about the salary structure. So is this a commission-only um, position? Are there bonuses that are going to be offered? And are there benefits beyond what we typically know to be benefits such as health, dental, vision, coverage, and, and a retirement plan and that sort of thing? Uh, are there things like flexible work schedules or transit subsidies or something like that um, that could also um, entice the candidate to apply for the position. I'm going to put up a sample job posting that I've seen on our site, and of course I have eliminated all identifying information so that uh, you can't really tell what company this is, but I want to actually point out some things that are missing from this job description that could really enhance it. It's really kind of okay the way it is, and many of you may relate to this job description because it starts out, you know, giving a very brief description of uh, who they are, where they're located. That's always helpful to to know um, what the company is all about. So that's pretty good. It's a pretty good start. They really um, kind of talked about who they are, you know, established in 1980, so it gives kind of a context that they're an established firm, they've been around for a while, so that sort of gives the candidate a little bit of comfort. Um, and now, you know, they're telling you that they're seeking an associate and, you know, some of the things that they're going to be doing, which is A, assist in the preparation of custom financial plans, B, implement the firm's investment strategy as it applies to each client, and C, communicate with our clients and their advisors. Now, those are pretty broad, as you notice. And I put this job description up here for a reason. And the reason is because 
this is a very common job description, but as I said in the last slide, there are definitely ways you can enhance it. Um, because as you see here, um, there's not really a whole lot about the path to succession. So I think this is one way, this, like I said, this job description is okay, it's pretty good, but certainly it could be improved upon. So I want you to kind of take inspiration from this job description um, and use it to, um, you know, to enhance your own job descriptions when you're creating them. Uh, certainly they provided a lot of characteristics here of the potential candidate, such as two to five years of experience, able to prepare income tax, tax flow, education cost projections, and so on, um, an intermediate level of understanding of tra traditional investment vehicles. Um, they specified that they would like a CFP professional or a CPA licensee. Um, a self-starter, they've indicated some computer skills that would be helpful, and excellent written and verbal communication skills, which almost every job description I've read most likely have. So, you know, what I want you to take away from this and consider is that while this is a pretty good job description, there are always ways to improve it. And the ways to do that are, again, mention a little bit more about the culture, maybe the mission statement or vision statement. Um, be clear about the roles and responsibilities, which I think this job description has done exceptionally well to tell you exactly what they're looking for in a candidate. Um, but to demonstrate a path to succession, let the person know, you know, you're going to be a valued member of this team, you're going to be, um, you're going to move up within this company. And this job description made no mention at all of salary or benefits, so I think that is kind of something that could be improved upon. Um, in this job description. So again, if you don't want to say a dollar amount, that's okay, but definitely say something about the structure. So what if you're not ready to hire a full-time employee? You may consider posting an internship. And why would you do that? Well, there are a lot of benefits to interns. Um, this person could be a potential future hire because an internship really serves as like an extended vetting period or interview period. Um, and it's also extended training experience for the intern. So um, if it's a good, high quality internship, it's really an extended interview or tryout for a potential full-time position. And you should really see it as such. You know, don't hire an intern to make coffee and copies. Really hire an intern that you want to mentor and and you want to inspire to become a full part of this profession. Now I will say, candidates definitely prefer paid internships, and you can understand why they are college students, so any little dollar counts. But I talk to them and they say that they do see the value in non-paid internships as long as it's a high quality internship, and they're not just making coffee or running a dry cleaning errand or something like that. They're actually learning something. An, inter an internship is a learning experience. That's why they're getting college credit for it. So, um, you know, think about a college class where you didn't learn anything. Obviously, you wouldn't want to pay for those, that, to pay the tuition for those credits. Similar to that, an internship is really something that should be a learning experience for the intern. So it should be of a very high quality. Now, in addition, it can really help you develop a pipeline for talent at a local college or university. So if you've hired out of one of our approved registered programs, let's say, that person will say, you know, that person will spend a summer with you, maybe get hired on, then go back to their friends who are still in the program and say, hey, you know, Company X gave me this great internship, you know, you should really apply, it was a really, really good experience, and I got hired afterwards. Or just in general, it's a great experience and it's a good internship to apply for. So you're really kind of creating a pipeline for talent, which is extremely important in this really, really competitive environment for candidates. And don't forget, on the Career Center, the CFP Board Career Center, internships are always free to post. So you don't have to pay to post an internship. You just check a box that says this is an internship and the fee will be waived. So a 30-day internship listing is free, and you can certainly extend that if you wanted to recruit 
for a longer period than just 30 days. So I wanted to give you a sample internship job posting. Um, now, the, with internships, it's important to, I think, talk mostly about the duties. So um, you can talk a little, you can certainly mention culture similar to the other job description that I had talked about. Um, you can certainly mention uh, if it's paid, and this one does say this is a paid internship. Um, but I think you want to really talk a lot about and focus on the duties and responsibilities because, again, interns are shopping around for internships, so they want to see exactly what am I going to be doing? How involved am I going to be in the financial planning process? Um, am I ever going to see a client? Not by myself, of course, but with a, a principal. Uh, so as much detail as you can provide about what the ideal candidate should have, what the duties are going to be, that's going to be really, really important so that the intern is aware of what they're getting themselves into, again, and um, how this internship is really going to benefit them. So now that we've talked a little bit about job posting, I wanted to talk a little about, bit about the interview process because, all right, so you've put the job description out there, and you've attracted a certain number of job candidates to you. The interview process is another audition for you. So the job description was your initial audition. Are you going to attract people to the position? Okay, great, you've attracted people. Now you have to interview them. And I always tell candidates, and it's important for you to know this, that the interview is a two-way street. So the person that's applying for the job is interviewing you as much as you're interviewing them. They want to know, is this the kind of place I can find myself in for 40, 50, 60 hours a week. So they're going to be questioning you just as much as, they're questioning, as you're questioning them. So you want the interview process to be a smooth one. So here's an ideal interview process, and it's really three steps. Now, I've heard some horror stories of six, seven, and eight-step interview processes, which can be very taxing on the person that's interviewing, of course, and on you and your staff time. But I think really an internship can boil down to three easy steps. Really an initial screening interview by telephone, 30 minutes or so, a more extended phone interview or an on-site interview, and then a final on-site interview with a broader range of firm members, of course to include the hiring manager, probably last in the interview process. So you want them to meet the team you know, and, and know kind of who's going to be there and who's working there. But the interview process can really be boiled down into these three steps. So standard questions are good, such as tell me about yourself, what are your strengths, what skills do you have to offer to bring to the table, but behavioral questions are better. Most behavioral questions start with the phrase, tell me about a time when you, dot, dot, dot. The recent behavioral interviewing questions are better than standard interview questions is that the theory is, Past behavior is a really good indicator of future behavior. So if you want to know if a person's going to do something, ask them if they've done it before. And how did that go? What were, what were the results? And by knowing that, you'll have a really good idea of how they're going to perform for you in the future. You should clarify anything that isn't clear from the resume and not make assumptions. And the biggest thing is any gaps on the resume because as candidates, I prepare people for interviews and I always tell them, be prepared to explain any gaps in your resume. So that's a big one. Um, don't assume they were fired or they were lazy or there's just this three month gap because they decided to travel the world or something like that. There are probably legitimate reasons behind a gap, and it's perfectly okay to ask about those reasons and just clarify that so that you're not sort of filling in blanks with information that isn't accurate. Um, so, and you should make sure you clarify anything else that maybe isn't clear from the resume or you just want to know more. Because remember, and I always tell candidates this, resumes are just a snapshot. So they may give you sort of a telegraphic view of the person, but you're not going to get all the details. That's what the interview is for. So the resume got the person to your door and in the door, 
Now the interview is the place where you let them expand upon what they've put on the resume and tell you a lot more about themselves. And also keep in touch with all prospects and email those who don't make it to the next level in the process. I think this is, this is falling by the wayside when it comes to interviewing. Um, I know you're busy. We, all, we certainly all are. That's very true. But if you've narrowed down your interview pool to three or four, um, by all means, stay in touch with the two that weren't selected and just let them know. You know, there were many qualified candidates. You were definitely one of them. We decided to go in a different direction. Because candidates are definitely waiting to hear. They want to know one way or the other, am I in the running or not? Um, please let me know. So you want to make sure you extend them that courtesy just to let them let them off the hook and let them know, listen, you know, you were great, but we definitely decided to go in a different direction because they're definitely going to be wondering. So save them the trouble of following up with you and follow up with them so that they're not wondering. So I wanted to just give you a little thumbnail sketch of the Career Center. So you're going to have access to financial planning talent. Um, and our connections are very far reaching. As you can see, these not staggering numbers here. You know, more than 75,000 CFP professionals. We've just reached that milestone. But then in addition, about 60,000 plus individuals who are actively pursuing or have at least expressed interest in CFP certification. And the reason that's significant is because a lot of people have a misconception about our site that you can only hire CFP professionals. That's it. Experienced professionals only, entry level goes somewhere else. Not true. We have a lot of candidates on our site who have their resumes posted, who are in the process of becoming a CFP and are looking for that entry level experience. So I really emphasize that, that this is the place to come for entry level talent because we have over 60,000 who are definitely out there and in the market for those entry-level positions. And in addition, we have over 220 board-registered education programs that are graduating students each year. They could be um, bachelor's, master's, or PhDs. Um, and there are also certificate programs um, that are primarily career changers or individuals who are already in the industry and are enhancing their credentials. So we do have that pipeline of internship talent as well from these registered programs that are out there. We get an average of 372 views per job. And this is an average, so many jobs receive a lot more than this, uh, a lot more than the 372. So there's a lot of activity on the site. That's what that tells you. In addition, we have over 1,600 searchable resumes. So when you have an active job posted, you can search the resume database. In addition, for a fee, you can purchase access to the resume database only. That's a new service that we're offering now. So if you don't want to post a job, but you really just want to look at the resumes that are out there, uh, you can purchase that package and you can take a look at the resume database. Now some of the features include, of course, job posting, the searchable resume database, including a resume alert where you can set up parameters for the kind of candidates that you're looking for and you'll get an email when those candidates come into the database. We do have sponsorships available for you to brand your company with the Career Center. We have featured job enhancements that will attract more candidates, and some of these include a featured job upgrade, which gives you additional graphics and better location on the website so that people can see your um, posting more clearly. Um, we also have video job enhancements that you can do. Produce, we will produce a 30-second video for you given your information uh, that gives the candidate a little extra multimedia to know a little bit more about your position. I can help you personally with creating an effective job description. You can certainly send it to me and I can critique it for you before you post it. Um, and we also have other webinars and resources, blog posts um, for you as employers. And there's the website uh, that you can go directly to um, to the employer side of the career center. So to learn more about the, um, the career center, you can certainly go to the website directly, cfp.net um, slash employers. 
And then if you have any questions at all, you can contact uh, the Career Center email, or my email is directly there, the landrews at cfp.org, or my phone number, 202-379-2213. Um, and so um, that's basically um, what I wanted to cover today, but we do have two more um, job posting uh, winners to announce. I'll turn it over to John, um, and he can announce those. We will announce those in a couple of seconds here. Um, I'm going to see if anybody has any questions for Lisa while we pull those winners. Uh, there's a question here about the internships. Do you want to review that? Oh, sure. Time? I can go back to that mm -hmm. internship slide. Whoops, I have to go through my animation. Here we go. The benefits of the uh, internships are here. So you can take a look at those. Interns definitely are a great way to introduce your company to potential employees. You know, certainly you're vetting them for the time that they're with you, and you may make a hire, and it'll be very easy for you. Yeah, and I would encourage everyone on the line, um, you know, especially if you're if you're on the fence about whether or not to use the Career Center. Um, all internships are free to post. Um, why not everybody on the line take advantage of a 30-day um, internship um, and, and see what kind of results you get? Now, of course, it is an internship, so it's not apples to apples uh, when we're looking at a, uh, at a job posting, but I think it's a great way um, to have access to the Career Center. All right, any other questions out there? I guess we did such a good job of covering you it. You got them all. All right. Yeah. So let me announce the, the uh, last two winners here. Uh, Robert Martin of Appella Capital and Karen Winkler of the Wealth Conservancy Incorporated. Uh, each of you also won one 30-day uh, job posting uh, on the CFP Board Career Center. And uh, Lisa will be in touch. Yep, I will be in touch with you by email to let you know the promotional code to redeem that, and it will be good until the end of the year. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Enjoy the rest of your day, and join us for uh, our next webinar, which is going to actually be focused on writing effective job descriptions for employers. Thanks, everyone.